uh, we got, you know, a great young man uh, here, of course, having his upcoming bout July 30th at the Barclays Center. It's going to be a big bout in the 140 pound division. Very decorated amateur, undefeated as a pro. Stoppages pretty much on every single fight. Mr. Gary Antoine Russell, what's going on? How you doing, my king? I'm doing all right. Good. Doing good, King. Doing good, King. I know that you're, you know, preparing for this upcoming battle uh, at the Barclays Center. It's going to be the co feature bout uh, to uh, Danny Garcia. Uh, they're uh, featured in the main event. So, how you feeling right now? Oh, man, I'm feeling all right. I got to live, live towards this legacy that's been rolled out for me, you know? Uh, I already got a blueprint. A lot of people ain't, ain't even fortunate enough to have a blueprint given to them, you know? So I'm just trying to uphold the name, the task that we've been doing as a family, as a unit. And I'm just trying to continue it out. As far as my opponent, I'm looking at him, him I'm looking at him like a, a typical opponent, you know? I know he's gonna come try to bring hurt and pain. That's what the sport is about. Um, but I also know on the other hand, he knows that I'm young. Cause in his social media tweet, he said, man, I'm gonna school this young lion. I'm take this young lion to school. So he know I got a lot of tenacity, a lot of energy, a lot of power, and he gonna have to try to tame me. You know, but what he forgot is that this, this is a sport that requires intellect as well. And I got a lot of it, you know, and I'm still growing. But for the most part, I'm just trying to stay humble, mm -hmm. stay stay mentally focused and tunnel vision on initial goals. Because after this fight, it ain't over. I got to continue. My goal is to clean out the 140 division. And then I can, I can go from there. Gotcha, gotcha. And then the conference call uh, that happened uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, we did kind of like touch on, you know, the thing with intellect and, you know, you being, having your debut in the MGM National Harbor with Francis yeah, yeah, Bartholomew, yeah. you know, as part of that, as part of that card. But uh, you were talking about how you grew over those five years as a professional, but mm -hmm. getting to this point where you're at right now, where you're just close to, you know, contending for a world title, like how does that feel to like say that, hey, it's just about there for me? Uh, it's, it just give me a, a feeling of crunch time, you know? It's crunch time. That's all. That's all that means. Because a lot of people, they either got the drive in them to take them to their destination without feeling fatigueness, and their their journey could be, I say, twelve years, thirteen years, you know. But you got to be driven. Mm -hmm. You got to have the steam in you, the spunk in you to go that that long journey. You know, and sometimes the things that you inhabited going through that, that, that journey of those 12 years, it can kind of like make you not think of how much time has been passed by. You know, before you know it, you're on your, your, your ninth year. You got three years ago, you know, to get to your maximum goal, the pinnacle goal. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so now I would think these three years, it's crunch time. I got to take it. More serious, I gotta open myself up a little more broader now. I gotta be more coherent. I gotta accept a lot of more things so I can learn more. I gotta understand more so I can be more lucrative, more, more, ex I, can, I can excel faster. You know, I gotta just be more wise about the things that I'm allowing myself to do so I can be the better me. And that goes outside and inside the ring, you know? Right. You know, you talk about, you know, being aware and kind of like improving on your awareness, like you said, inside and outside of the ring. Uh, talk about, you know, being outside of the ring, preparing for your fights. Of course, you know, you have your brothers there, you know, along with you, you know, training and fighting in the gym. And right. you know, I've been there, you know, a few times myself. So I know how it is sometimes when it's right. you know, really down and dirty. Uh, of course, you know, your brother, Mr. Gary Russell Jr., is uh, your main trainer uh, right now. So how is it, you know, like preparing with him as he's like one of the hardest workers in the game and you're there right alongside with him as a younger brother? Hey, uh, that's always been the case. Uh, like I said, I'm embracing things that's, that's new. Life gonna give you obstacles. 
That's why I said I'm trying to be coherent on, on multiple occasions, inside and out the room. Uh, my father, he's been the one saying, hey, you're not doing this right. You're not doing that right. This is a little wrong. That's good. That is perfect. And he's done that to not just Mr. Gary Russell, but every one of us. It's never been just Mr. Gary Russell saying, hey, no, nah, that's wrong. That's wrong. If he did, it'd be like, because his mind is all over the place and it's, it's all over the place dealing with the profession. He's in a gym, he's just walking past, but his, his wheels is turning and he see me throwing a combination. He'll probably just look from the corner of his eye and like, nah, he ain't throw that right. Hey, Twan, you ain't throw that right. You know, but for the most part, it's been my dad saying, hey, pay attention to how he delivered this, this shot right here. Twan, throw the conversation, I'm um, throw the combination again. And Mr. Gary Russell will be right there beside my father's side, looking, observing, as well as Gary Allen Russell and Gary Antonio Russell observing. All right, I see what you're saying there. Yeah, he didn't do it that time. Do it again, I do it again. They see me get it right. They'll watch until I get it corrected. So they would know what to do and what not to do as well. And now it's a case of my father's not there but I still got to be in the same student position and the same belief system got to still be there. You know what I mean? Although it's the belief system will always be there, but it's just a certain level of openness versus your brothers and your dad. Yeah, feel you. You know? Feel you. You know, uh, you know, like you said with your dad, you know, being very observant. Uh, of course, being in the gym at times, it could be, you know, you could be in the ring, you know, they're training and your brothers could be like outside of the ring playing chess and he could be sitting right there next to him watching, watching them play chess, but then he'll see out the corner of his eye that you, you know, you're not doing that combination right. So, you know, over the years, he was like very observant and you, you know, kind of like, you know, of course was like under his wing, you know, for, for all that time. And I've seen you, you know, with, alongside him, you know, whether it was, you know, why you, had your fights or didn't have your fights and you had appearances where you were, you know, watching fights. So you definitely right. took everything in, you know, with your father uh, along the way during your professional career. And and I, that's what I'm saying. I got to be be able to be coherent enough to catch these things, these situations, where though I can apply the information that my father done gave me. Because now that he's gone, it ain't no chaperone like my father, my only chaperones would be my bigger brothers, my mother. That's all I got left, you know, and we operate as a unit. We move as a huddle and we got to keep it like that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Try to keep things the same as possible. That's what we've been preaching to one another because that's our way of, I guess, doing damage control. Everybody's grieving here and there. You got the mask on trying to feel tough. You don't want to rub off no, no negative or sad energy because you want everybody uplifted. That stuff that goes on outside of the room. But it also can germinate inside the gym. And everything that goes on inside the gym gets you prepared for the real fight night. So your, your training can't be slack. And it can't be lackadaisy. Mentally, you, you got to be there in training. You can't not be there training because you're going to half-ass do it. Right, you know, you can't cut corners because it will show. This is the one sport that will show when you cut corners. You know, you can't play this sport. You can play tennis, you can play soccer, you can play basketball, but you cannot play boxing. Definitely not. You know, so these are things that we are centering in on. You know, and um, I'm happy how it's going thus far because I haven't seen things uh, spike. I done seen emotions and personality spike for the better, for the better, you know? Time frames are not on black people time. Nah, we early. If we're not early, we, we socialize and letting each other know, hey, we ain't gonna be here. Uh, I, got a, I got this appointment at this time. Um, when I get out, et cetera, et cetera, we meet up. So the communication is good. You know, the, the intentions on, on our actions are good. And right now, I think we all more focused than anything because we feel as though that it's something 
it's a source that's no longer there that was such as a, such an important source. Mm -hmm. You know, my father, like I said, he he didn't gathered all of us up, and he he forced us to do it. He inspired us to do it, and he saw when we started loving doing it, started loving doing it with him, because it was such a it was such a I don't know a, a, a wholesome thing at, at some point in time. You know, our our wins was paraded amongst the, the immediate family. Not all the time we used to parade our our wins, our victories. At first it was just like, all right, our victory, cool. We trained for this. We knew this was going to be the case if we did it right in the ring because we practiced it in the gym. So the whole, woo, no, nah, we don't want that. Because this, this is what you do. This is what you train for. So when you get results, you're not supposed to get excited when you get the results that you train to get. Mm -hmm. If anything, you post a lock in your mind, say, okay, it works. And I know how, how I can set it up in various ways now, depending on the opponent fighting style, et cetera, et cetera. And then we build on from there. And that's how we've always been doing things. Gotcha. You know, like you said, I mean, you have a unit, you know, there, um, you know, it, yeah, it started with your father and your brothers, and it's like a well loyal machine. And so you already have the blueprint, you know, to that machine. As long as you know the blueprint, the machine could still go without any, you know, pretty much any hitches. You see, right. so as long as you, you know, had that blueprint and stick to that blueprint, the machine is going to still go without, you know, any issues, you know, and that's the thing that you're, you know, continuing there with the Russell legacy. You know, with, with, you know, yourself and the three brothers, you know, of course, with, you know, Mr. Gary Russell, you know, Gary Antonio and you, you know, Antoine, you got all, all of those fighters there and pretty much, you know, at or near the top of your respective divisions. So, you know, that that machine has been going strong up to this particular point. Definitely. And that's what I mean by not overanalyzing my opponents. You know, styles make fights, but a lot of times, people overanalyze their opponent. You put your opponent on the pedestal before you even step in there and see what he got. You know what I mean? Right. Overanalyze. Now you you blowing something up. You're making something bigger than what it really is. Right. You know, and my father taught me about that. My brothers and my family, they help that type of teaching sink in and, and be retained. Because a lot, a lot of things that people learn, they retain it. They learn it and it help them get over that, that temporary moment. And then after they pass that moment, they probably forget about it until they run into that situation again. You know, but these type of things were, was retained. And we, we right now is like in the heat of the body. And I don't think the life itself really cares because these are natural things of life. These are things that's bound to happen. You know, we, we get birth, we get born, we get old, we decease. While we're here, we play, pass on these, these great jewels, information and words of wisdom and a structure of civilization. Hopefully people can pick up on it and live by it and they retain the information that was given and they can pass that on, you know, but this is stuff that goes on outside of the ring, not just inside of the ring. The stuff that goes outside of the gym, not just inside the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's definitely um, a battle that we always got to go up against. That's why we named our gym the way the name it is, Enigma Boxing. A lot of people think they know us, but they don't know us. We go up against things that a lot of the, the vast majority of the world go through, uh -huh. but don't don't under, understand how it, how it works because certain teachings just haven't been fruitfully given to them as an upbringing. I'm glad that I got the teachings that I got from my father and my family. And like you said, a, a machinery that was well old, it should keep going if you got the blueprint, no matter what phase you're in. You got the blueprint now, it should continue. And that's yep. our plan. That's our viewpoint as, as the brothers and as the Russell family. You know, we just trying to keep the legacy going on. Gotcha. And like, and like you said, you're going to continue that legacy and continue your uh, action on July 30th in the Barclay Center against Francis Bartholomew. And, you know, uh, you know, given the, 
uh, recent news about that 140 pound division, some things are like opening up here and there as far as like, you know, challenging or contending for a world title. So, you know, after this bout against Francis Bartholomew, I mean, who knows, you could be like right there on the cusp of fighting for one of those world titles. But, you know, like you said, you just stay poised, you know, stay, you know, composed and just be ready for the battle on July 30th, you know? Definitely, definitely, that's the plan. Gotcha. Now, um, one last thing uh, here is, you know, over the course of the years, like I've, you know, seen you grow over the course of your professional career. Uh -huh. and, and I talk about, you know, your poise and your composure. And the other thing is your maturity, no matter, you know, what time or what period that I've talked with you or if you've been part of an interview, that you've always carried that sense of maturity and knowledge and intelligence all across the board. Like kind of like going to that in like your foundation, which, you know, started with your father, you know, up until now. Um, like I said, it was an upbringing. First of all, we used to live in the murder in the city of uh, DC. It was once upon a time the murder capital. Oh yeah. You know, so strategistic things. It rung a bell to my father. It was a life and death type of living lifestyle. Not because of my father's lifestyle, but just because the neighborhood, the area was so corrupt. But it was done through systematics, you know, government, power of the, of the oppressors, et cetera, et cetera. You got gentrification. All of that happens because of uh, uh, oppressor, the powers of the states, you know, shrinkage plants. Stimulus checks, all of these are, are gadgets of the government that we got to go through as people. Uh, a system, not gadgets, but systems. Um, my father, he went through it. He saw that it was very unfair. It was an unfair system, you know, not just for melanated men, but for people of color, period. This was this was the time they had the 999 law. Anything, $9,999, you gotta turn it over to IRS. You need to find out. But at the time they wasn't giving us no jobs. Right. We couldn't right. It was a it was a survival thing. It was a survival thing. My father just saw a lot of a lot of things that was unfair because he was such a gener generous guy, stand-up guy. I didn't think that he he liked those type of things. And he saw that him having kids in a world like that would have been, I think, the death of him. So he made it his business to teach us the things that we need to know about, not just life, not just the hostile environment, not just hostile people, not just people who who's willing not to just oppress you and your mentality and your greatness, your happiness, but your family. Like, it can really get chaotic. And fun fact, I shouldn't be saying this. It was a thing during the 70s, late 70s, 80s, a tape that was real big during the time called Faces of Death. Hmm. This one VCRs was real big. And it was a thing of desensitization that my father instilled. And he was basically showing it because we were young, but the time frame didn't match up with our wholesomeness, our pureness as kids. You see, I got kids that are pure, but the neighborhood don't care about that pureness. Right. Seeing grown men getting things done to them that should never happen. I'm talking about they should be going to jail, right? Getting assaulted and stuff like that. Grown right. women, old women, young women, young men. And he didn't like that. So he took, he made his business to devote his life to teaching us everything that we needed to know as far as uh, self-preservation, self-protecting, uh, and just learning how to get ourselves out of formulas that's, that's just not created by us. You know, de-escalating situations that's not created by us. Being able to see situations from afar because it could put us in danger. 
boxing went hand in hand. Boxing kept us out of the streets, kept us out of the neighborhood. We had to travel out the neighborhood or even train in our building. We trained, that's what we started in our basement. Mm -hmm. Started from our basement. You know, because we wasn't allowed to go outside. When we did go outside, we went out in a certain form of fashion on some togetherness. Togetherness for real. Like mm -hmm. everybody on a swivel. Everybody in a swivel. Rules everybody as a unit. All right. That. Right. And my father saw that up, up to some point, the oppressors was dumbing us down. Us as a culture, it was dumbing the cultures down. It was belittling the cultures. And he saw that how. He saw the, the strategistics of the, the policy enforcers, how they was being used by the government. He saw the strategistics of uh, just the racism, how it was being used by the government and the law. He saw mm -hmm. a lot of other things, the workforce. Sometimes you see me on movies, I believe. You go to college for four years, six years, come out, try to get a job, you're overqualified, you're overly qualified. That's, that's, I think, some racist stuff, to be honest. But that goes back to the system that we are all under. You know, but then you don't go to college and you say, you're not qualified. You're, too un you're not yeah, eligible. Yeah. How does that work? How, right, how does it work? It's a I don't like you thing. That's all. That's all. And we got a, we got a, a, a butthole type business going. We want to keep it like that. That's what it's really about. You know, they pick and choose who they want to go in. They going to pull theirs up, pull their own kind up. And my father taught us that a long time ago. And we had to mature into the teachings that he was giving us because it wasn't overnight when we saw something that he taught us about. You know, it took days, sometimes weeks, sometimes years to see, oh man, yeah, Pops, I see exactly what you're saying. I peeped the guy doing that. I peeped the girl doing that. Or I peeped the situation turning out like that. And I left before it happened, but I watched it from a distance. And I be dang, they, they started getting into it, you know? And these was things that he was teaching us. Bird. You know, IQ about life. And, and then boxing, like I say, it's the same thing. Out in life, you automatically gonna go convert to your self-survival skills, self-protective skills. You need food, you know that you gotta work. You need a job. You know that you got to look nice, dress dress up right, have some academics instilled into your in, into your brain, because when you're talking, these people that's that's willing to hire you, they want to make sure that you're somewhat sophisticated, somewhat eligible. Right, right, right. But that still goes back to a self protecting or self survival skill, because you need food to eat. No one is going to give you food freely, but you need money to buy the food. So you got to have a job. You got to have a profession. You got to put, you got to center yourself to have a profession, to uh, allow yourself to be lucky enough to be chosen to have a profession. But all of these phases, you got to think your way through it. Yeah. You know, and my father, he was teaching us these things. Nothing is given. He used to call us Vikings. Yeah, my young Vikings. My young Vikings, and he even told us how the Vikings work, you know? At some point in time, Vikings used to send their offsprings out and say, y'all don't come back home until y'all got something to eat. Y'all got to go catch y'all food. We got it so fruitful over here in the USA. But it also worked against us because it make us reliant, dependent. You know? Yep. yep. Pacifies. My father taught us about a lot of things, you know, a lot of things. It's our job to just stay on point about all the things he taught us, you know, and how that converts to in the ring, self-protective. You got to remember, it's, it's simple because, like I said, everybody throw the same punches. This is just a base off of the level of creativity and the science of the sport. It can't be changed. A hook. It's a loop and punch. A straight cross is a straight punch. A straight jab is a straight punch. The dynamics on how these punches are being delivered and thrown naturally, I don't think that can be changed. That's just how the sport is. A hook, a body shot, a uppercut, a jab, a left hand. Then you got some head weaving going on. Some slipping, some bobbing and weaving. But it's, it's a, a intellect 
that can help you get through anyone's selective punches. If they use right. those punches, ain't nobody in boxing kicking. So you don't got to worry about feet being thrown at you. But you do got to worry about these specific punches. You got a, a cross, a uppercut, body shot, hook, right? And we made that uh, a, a concrete thing of our understanding. Mm -hmm. So when we do certain things, we're capitalizing on moves. Yeah, he's a long fighter. A long fighter, he's going to have to have a lot of stamina. Good distance. He got to know his distance because you're right. long and you got long arms doesn't mean that you know your distance. Right. You got to exactly. know your distance. You got to have stamina and you definitely got to have tenacity and an IQ on how to set a person up because you got long arms working against you, especially with a short fighter because he's going to mm -hmm. try to press you out. You got to find your range to line them up, have maximum strength, maximum power and stuff on your shots. Mm -hmm. And you got to still be ready to throw something else. So you got to be in position. All of that comes back to you knowing your distance with them long arms you got. For yep. short fighter, you're going to have to have stamina, high level of tenacity, high level of head movement. Why? Because you got shorter arms. You're a shorter opponent. You got to do a lot of moving. You got to get in there quick and you got to be quick. Yep. And this is just stuff I'm throwing out there that I think an outside person that doesn't even participate in this sport will see if he saw a, a, a tall person fighting a short person. You don't have to be a, a, a boxer. You don't even have to participate in the sport. But outside looking in, you see that this short person got to get inside. Right. Why? Right. Because his arm's too short. Naturally, that's just the logical sense. Right. And it's a science. My father was teaching us the logical sense of the science of boxing. I think that's what makes us great how we are. And he made it where though it's a second nature thing. We just got to have our feet on the gas pedal to keep it going. That's that. That's why I always tell people, I'm my biggest critic. Even the Victor Poster fight, they threw the mic in my face and they say, what you think about the fight? I said, man, I give myself a, a, a C. Want to know why? Because we train in the gym to execute certain things. And when I get in this fight, the real dance, I should be able to execute it. And when I do execute it, I shouldn't be surprised. Why? Because that's what we train for. If I'm surprised about anything or overly happy about anything, excited. it's because, right, overly, overly excited about anything, it's because I see that I done gave the fans their money's worth. I done put a show on for the fans. I made my family happy. happy. A lot of people be thinking we stay up there out of town when we fight. Nope. After we fight that same night, we gone. We travel back home. We'd rather sleep at the airport, have a little quick burn up at the airport versus stay there too long because of how we move. We move in a unit just like that. We mm -hmm. come up here, conduct business, leave. We tell the, the reporters, this is what we do, but it doesn't define who we are because they just look at us as, hey, he's just a jock. He's just a person that's athletic. He got good acrobats. But that's always been the case with melanated people. Gotcha. Yep, no doubt. You know? and you, yeah, and like you were saying there, as far as like, you know, your dad coming up in, in the D.C. area, like I was around there, around Northeast, you know, Northeast D.C., around the early, mid-90s. So I knew I knew how rough it was out there. And, and Real rough. Definitely, definitely had to keep your head on a swivel out there. Real you rough. In a unit or by yourself, you know what I mean? So... That's uh, definitely something there that, you know, that he instilled in you and your brothers that, you know, you know, continues to be part of your mind to this day. Yeah, with, with that, man, I thank you so much for taking the time to uh, speak with me here on the, uh, with the Boxing Source. And we're definitely looking forward to you against Francis yeah. Bartholomew, Barclay Center, July 30th. All hey, right. Just keep us uplifted, my king. I appreciate that. All right. No doubt, King. Mm -hmm. Bless up. You know it. It's a birthright, by the way, too. Yes, sir.